Hey guys, what going on is Ashley from Ashley Today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. Happy to have you here. I am not alone today. I am joined by special guest Cyrilla from Plarium from Raid Shadow Legends, all the way from Ukraine. Cyrilla, welcome back to the channel. Very nice to be here again. Hi, Ash. It's been a while. <laughs> it has been a while. How are you doing today? Obviously, is a a I don't know, somber day and also an important day uh, uh, for, for you and, and your entire country. One year anniversary from the uh, the invasion of, of your country. You're still there uh, in Ukraine. Uh, I imagine along with some of the team uh, from, from Plarium as well. So I want to invite you on. Uh, the reason this video is not titled like Plarium interview or anything crazy like that is because I did want to focus on a little bit of, you know, Marichka and Taris and kind of the... I don't know if lore is a fair word here, but kind of the background of those characters about character design. I also wanted to ask you about some Easter eggs on other characters that have always kind of left me scratching my head. Like, what does this mean? For example, a little teaser is I'm going to ask Cyrilla about like, what the heck is on the back of Walking Tomb Drang? Who is that? You know? So uh, a few questions about a few different champions as well as champion rebalancing. And uh, I'm going to throw in a question at the end about Tag Team Arena, as I promised my viewers. So with all that said, Cyrilla, before we get into Taurus and Marichka, I did want to ask you about, uh, you know, 2023. Hopefully it's going to be a big a year for Raid, the year of PvP. Uh, do you have anything here? <laughs> Just sneaking in a good question for you. Do you have anything to say about the future timeline of anything that should there be, uh, do you expect a, a, a new update sometime soon? Well, the new update uh, is just around the corner. Okay. However, the content that you're really interested in uh, is like a month or so away. Uh, but uh, things go great a month or so. And uh, we are going to release a uh, sneak peek at what is going to happen and um you guys will all know even sooner than you think okay it sounds like it's gonna be big pretty big okay just cool. like promised cool like doom tower big uh, like, <laughs> like big okay okay we got it we got you we got like you like Team marina big <laughs> Tech Team marina big all right all right so okay, okay that's a bad joke <laughs> You have to acknowledge mistakes. <laughs> I'm going to be like, all right, let me uh, play. Tag Team Arena Big. Oh, fantastic. I'm sure the viewers are are, are, are thrilled right now. But No, actually, the, yeah. the good version, not the, the very initial version. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, okay. So let's, I want to, I want to get back to Taurus and, uh, and Marichka. Uh, I, I kind of want to start with kind of an, I mean, maybe a little bit of an unorthodox question. And that is, is these champions are some of the most OP champs in the game, arguably the most powerful champions in the game. Uh, is that for like, is that for sentimental reasons? Well, of course it's not by accident. Uh, these two champions are very dear to us and they have a paramount significance to the whole team. Actually, uh, the team of developers were the ones who initiated uh, like introducing these uh, characters in the game. Uh, and of course, you may, if you follow the news and if you know what is going on and how we are, we have been living throughout the previous year, you know uh, how important they are to us and how important for us to have uh, something in the game that embodies our um, strength and fight and um, our will to keep working on what we love to do. And that's been the, for me, it's been the most, I know we've talked about this at length in, in previous videos that you've been here on my, on my other channel as well, but that's one thing that you know, it never escapes me. And I can tell for the for the whole community, you know, the raid community, I think I speak for every that I've heard of, I heard from is even though we complain a lot, uh, I think it's still unbelievable what you guys have done keeping the game up, keeping updates coming, keeping quality of life coming, despite, you know, just knowing firsthand from speaking to so many Plarium employees, getting to know some of you guys throughout the years, despite what is actually going on what's actually going on in your lives without internet in you know the basement every you know few hours air raid sirens and everything else relocating so how are you how are you i hope it's not too personal Cyrilla, but like how are you holding up personally uh 
I promised I wouldn't cry. <laughs> Uh, pro I promised myself I wouldn't cry dur during the interview, but um, uh, it's like we feel all and nothing at the same time. Like uh, it's an, an unprecedented feeling and um, not a lot of people um, go through something uh, that we have survived over the previous year uh, in their entire life. Um, but um, right now we are full of hope and um, a desire to live, move forward, and to fight on. Um, okay, I'm crying. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, right now uh, we are uh, we have managed to uh, go back to the pre-war uh, level of uh, work and. Uh, we are managing uh, to do everything even in a better quality and at a uh, faster pace than uh, we did. Uh, we keep adapting to the circumstances. And even though a lot of my colleagues uh, have been forced uh, to flee abroad, um, uh, most of them are still staying in Ukraine. And um, as you rightfully noticed, uh, we have to uh, deal with all those problems with with electricity outages and um, rockets, sirens, um, all that emotional pressure. But <laughs> sorry. No, no, I totally. It, you don't have to be sorry, and I, I, I can. I think that the more time that passes by, like there's a certain sense of not for you, but for the world to have complacency about these things. And that's like the worst thing that can happen. That's why I want to continue to, to bring you on if you're willing. And, you know, obviously incredibly brave of you to come on and talk about these things, you know, in the context of still a video game, but it still reflects a lot of, of, you know, it gives you an opportunity such as Taras and Marichka. Sure. It's just a game, but it gives you an opportunity to show that pride. And also to talk about, it gives you a vehicle to talk about these things that it's like really reality for you, for you guys. So, you know, I think that you know this already, but just incredible, unwavering support from the community, everybody I've ever talked to. So uh, we can empathize, but not certainly not understand and comprehend what life must be like for you on a daily basis. It's it's a very good thing that you actually gave me the platform to talk. And uh, it's very important for us to keep working because it's something that, keep, that keeps us afloat and that gives us the sense of stability and um realization that life still uh, goes on and we do something uh, for uh, the people that um, are there for us. Uh, so it's very important that we keep going and um, just do everything as usual Yeah. in spite of uh, what is going on and uh, because of what is going on, because we have to be strong and uh, we have no right to... Um, um, go down in any way. Well, I certainly admire admire your strength. Uh, as I said, and thank you again for coming on and being open to talk about this stuff. Uh, I do want to, I guess, transition to the, the 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 champions that we we spoke about earlier, and that's Taurus and Marichka. So you guys obviously wanted to make them powerful. They do uh, have a, a tremendous amount of meaning to you and the entire game team, the design team. Uh, talk to me a little bit about what they what they mean to you. You know, I guess start with uh, start with Taurus. I read the lore or uh, kind of the background story that you guys posted on like Facebook and social media about a month or two ago. Uh, but feel free to look at kind of like whether you want to start with the lore or just start with like the, the meaning and how it relates to their skills and what they do. But talk about like how how you came up with these two champions. Well, first of all, like I said, uh, it was something that our uh, that my colleagues, our employees, wanted to do. Uh, they wanted to see uh, some symbols uh, in the game, and they wanted to be them. Uh, they wanted them to be strong and invincible, and uh, like even maybe a little bit OP. However, that was not our um, initial intention um however uh, we know we do realize that they're becoming uh, meta champions and we keep a close eye on uh the things happening on the arena and in all those end game um spheres of the game so there is no need to worry in uh any uh, aspect of this uh so um to be honest and to start with uh when i first read um 
the explanations of the skills of Taras and Marichka, I was deeply impressed with how much they were intervened and um, associated with uh, what is happening to us uh, in the moment at present. Um, and what I mean is this deep symbological uh, meaning that is uh, put into all of those abilities that they have. Mm, so uh, you may have heard that uh, we also introduced uh, these very characters in our other game. Uh, it's a strategy game, uh, which is a lot older than Raid. It is Sparta. And first uh, we put those characters into the game and then we transfer them into Raid because actually they fit perfectly into the whole universe and uh, the lore of the world of Teleria. So um, it's actually something that we did for most of our games. Um, you actually play Macarena and you also uh, saw uh, some of the Ukrainian um, symbolic, symbolic mm -hmm. um, features presented into the game there. Uh, so that's how we um, uh, thought we would support our fellow, fellow Ukrainians and our colleagues uh, throughout uh, the game uh, in the game and uh, by um, actually uh, letting players to interact with these characters. Uh, talking about um, their um, how uh, you had the question about how they are either they're real people or yeah. um, they are like imaginary characters. Mm -hmm. uh, and I should say that first of all, they are uh, most uh, mostly a collective image of the people of Ukraine and of the country itself. So Marichka is um, what Ukraine is, like she is our country. And um, Taras uh, is um, actually a Ukrainian warrior. He represents all of the Ukrainian warriors, uh, starting with Cossacks that fought for our independence, starting from the 17th century and um, throughout several centuries after that. Um, and right now, there are a lot of warriors that defend our country. And um, Taras is someone that is an epitome of that fight, of that um, battle. Uh, and um, if you look at those images of their artworks, uh, there are so many details that um, deserve to be paid attention to um, and you just stopped um, at uh, Marichka. Mm -hmm. If you take a closer look at her, um, there are all kinds of um, uh, national elements represented in her uh, headwear, in her jewelry, um, her armor and weapon and uh, you just if you pay enough attention, you can also um, find several Easter eggs, both uh, in Marichka and Taras's images. Uh, however, those would be visible mostly to Ukrainians who are aware of the context and know uh, more on the history of Ukraine and on the details of our um, ongoing find, fight. Um, could you give us? Uh, if, could you give us one? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, actually, um, if you switch to Marichka, you will find um, you will find um, a red coral um, necklace. Yep. Uh, that's an amulet of protection. Um, it has been for centuries uh, in our culture and uh, our great grandmothers wore those. Um, uh, there are also uh, elements uh, of fire in all of her skills uh, and um, there is a fire falcon uh, and all those um, floral elements. Uh, on the floor when she performs her uh, skills, there is a word vola. Um, which is like freedom, liberty in English. Um, and if you go back to uh, Taras, you can see um, like a horn uh, on his belt and there is a saber, which is not uh, really 
something that uh, is an epitome of uh, of our nation, national uh, our, uh, weapon. However, it still uh, has a very traditional touch uh, to it. Uh, also, um, Taras is actually one of the first uh, Kara is actually the first uh, first champion in the game that has received uh, his very own special music uh, in the Champions Index. And it's not any random tune. Uh, it's called uh, Cervona Kalina, uh, the rat of... Uh, I'm not sure how to spell that um, in, in English, uh, but you actually can Google it. Uh, it its origins go back to uh, the 18th century, if I'm not mistaken. It was uh, the Cossacks' uh, anthem, and it was reworked in 1914. It became uh, an anthem of our um, Siege Rifleman, it was uh, an army of Ukraine that also fought for our independence. And uh, this year, uh, well, the year the war, the big war started uh, on the 24th of February 2024, uh, 2022, uh, it um, became uh, an anthem of our um, unity. It also became an anthem of this ongoing war. Mm, so um, recently, it was um, uh, it's been adapted uh, by David Gilmore of Pink Floyd, and uh, together with uh, the Ukrainian singer and the frontman of the band uh, Boombox, Andriy Hlevnyuk, they recorded a video clip and um, raised money for. Um, uh, I, I think it was for uh, doing charity uh, to help people of Ukraine and um, for humanitarian reasons. Um, so if um, someone still hasn't turned on the sound and uh, didn't hear the uh, exceptional music that Taras is performing in the game, then they should. We're going we're gonna to play that right now in the background for, for a second. Okay, awesome. Now, tell me a little bit about uh, a little bit more about this. The skills, you know, what are they? What's the meaning behind them? Shatter upon us, uh, heroes, intercession, constant pressure, fierce battler. Some of them are rather, you know, self-explanatory. I would imagine, but font of tenacity is really cool. United we triumph, nurtured friendship, etc. Yeah. So uh, if you look closely at all at all those skills and you go over them and you compare. Um, compare them to what we are going through as a nation right now, um, then you can see uh, a very deep meaning to each one of them. So uh, when we talk about Marichka, uh, there are the skills uh, that have to do with allied attacks and uh, with strengthening your allies and with cleansing uh, the debuffs, so stuff like that. So uh, it's... Uh, if you uh, then shift the attention to uh, the right. things that are happening in our country, um, you can see this parallel with how uh, we are strong because of our allies' help. And um, like um, there is a, a skill with um, her healing allies and reviving uh, them, uh, like placing shield. It's all about how, um, of course, we are going through very difficult times and we are suffering great damage, the greatest that our nation probably has ever endured. Uh, but in the end, uh, it is going to um, make us stronger and um, to uh, give us strength to um, improve and develop in the future, um, again, as a nation. Also, um, going back to, uh, to uh, Taras, there are some uh, skills that um, also represent how brave and powerful our our warriors are uh, so uh, he uh, retaliates uh, if someone um fans marichka 
uh, he can uh, take uh, an enemy down with his bare hands. He doesn't. He doesn't even need a weapon for that. And um, he basically proves that um, you don't have to be so strong, and you don't have to um, have all the artificial um, weapon and uh, uh, this uh, heavy armory to defeat your enemy. You have to be brave. You have to have the courage to stand for what is dear and important to you. And that is what he is about. Uh, also, there is a very interesting skill with placing fear on uh, all those orcs, undead hordes, and uh, those not very good champions, um, that, which is basically about how um, with our fight, we make our enemies uh, experience fear. I think that's it's incredible, and 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 I've noticed obviously I've noticed the connection between the skills and what they do and the the meaning it has for for Ukrainians. Uh, but even you going through them, it just it, it gives more kind of light sheds more light on every little nuance was thought through here, and in massive credit. You know, not only to the artists for these incredibly beautiful designs, like some of the best in the game, uh, as they rightfully should be, uh, especially Marichka, like that headpiece is incredible. Like the whole, the whole aesthetic on both of them is is incredible. Uh, yeah, it but- actually has like uh, her helmet has these uh, metal flowers and wheat ears that actually make up a wreath. Uh, this is a um, national piece of uh headwear that also our ancestors used to wear no i think it's i think it's incredible and then again the thought that went behind their skills and everything like that it's cool you know it's it's really to me it's it's really awesome that you guys the the design team that the the game team thought uh this would be a really cool symbolic kind of gesture and give something gives me goosebumps (laughs) yeah it's it's really it's really really cool and obviously the, the they look amazing the skills are amazing as well uh I would love to. I would love to transition a little bit to those Easter eggs that I that I talked about. But first, I wanted to ask you quickly about balancing. You guys have been doing a, an amazing job, really touching a lot of champions recently. Errol uh, got his his long awaited rework. Now he has he's an AOE hitter. Uh, we have champions like Vlad the Nightborn who are actually really really good now. Uh, you know, super solid compared to at least where he was, right? Uh, any plans to do more of those soon? Is that going to be a regular thing this year? Uh, Well, uh, you brought a very good point. Uh, Champions rebalancing is something that uh, has been um, of a very uh, outmost priority for us for a very long time now. And uh, the like, why we do them is uh, dictated by the necessity to um, adapt to the very dynamic pace of the game development and you know how like we keep bringing a lot of new content a lot of new features and we have to make sure that uh, all the champions in the game actually fit in and uh, adapt to this uh, very swift um, uh, direction to this very uh, very (laughs) sorry no i know all like the changes Um, and stuff everything you're adding to the game essentially yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, they uh, have to stay um, to catch up with what is going on in the game. And uh, throughout the previous year, we uh, kept um, rebalancing all those champions, uh, obviously collecting feedback from players, analyzing it, and then uh, based uh, on this feedback and on the analytical data that we monitor uh, regularly, we would like uh, rebalance champions. And um, honestly, we got very good at it. And uh, um, This year, we're going uh, to actually uh, decrease our pace with that a little bit. However, we think that the state of things that uh, is right now in the game is uh, pretty much optimal. However, we will uh, keep an eye on what is going on. Um, And if you actually uh, compare uh, all those champions and how they perform right now to what things were like a year ago, you will see a big improvement. 
Uh, makes sense to me. Again, I really love what you guys have been have been doing there. So uh, no complaints at all about really any of the balance changes that you put in so far. I do think there's a lot of uh, of champions that still could use a, a boost out there. You know, like a lot of, especially for me, a lot of like voids that should be inherently like quite a bit better than their counterparts. So I hope that you guys continue to you know look at those. Uh, but in addition to that, well, I didn't. Uh, yeah. I didn't say we would stop. I know. I know. Just, I'm just, uh, just saying uh, we would. <laughs> uh, we probably wouldn't be able to uh, do them so regularly, uh, or with uh, with the same frequency that we used to. Okay. Uh, however, we will keep uh, on balancing them. Okay. Would love. Would love for you guys to take a look at those Doom Tower. Uh, champions too. Just a, just a personal thing of mine. If you guys you pass that on, <laughs> let's pass that on to the uh, to the game team. I think that maybe a little bit better on those guys. And it'd be really cool if you gave some really significant buffs at the same time in that same line of thinking, right? To champions like Azure, to champions like uh, Tolf, like some of the really crappy void uh, that really don't people don't even use, you know? Yeah. So I would say at the I very least, let's get some big buffs to those and all the Doom Tower champions too. All right, let's let's uh, let's move on to the lightning round here, uh, Cirilla. Tell me what the heck this Walking Tomb Dreng means. What, what, what is this, dude? Okay, so um, that's... Um, mm. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, you can you can count yeah, this yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The I moments you. where I, uh, I consider, uh, like when I think about this. Uh, well, that's a good one. Uh, it's um, this baby, right? This is a fun one. <laughs> uh, well, it's a baby, and uh, it just contradicts uh, all the loss of humanity uh, that is the golem's body that is being used as a vessel uh, for uh, his own soul and that is something so this is walking to we're going to bed today is it walking to yeah. soul or is it the the golem soul no no it's the walking tom drag and drank soul oh okay cool. i thought it was his little son just, soul ch just in chilling a in the, with him yeah Okay, what does this mean on Constantine the Dayborn? What does this what does this writing mean over here? Um, okay, there are some uh, Latin words, curses. Uh, curses. And it says <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, uh, it's Invictus, which is invincible, uh, and there are also um, inscriptions like uh, Purgato Eos, which is cleanse them. And Malus Maleficarum, which is the witch's hammer, uh, and Memento Mori, of course. Oh, is that, is that, is that uh, his, I think everyone arm? knows this one. Oh, it's on his arm. I didn't even see this. In his armor. I should really pay attention. <laughs> this is cool. I didn't even realize that. Uh, yeah, oh, there's on his sword, too. in fire. Wow. Yep. Okay, cool. We did All put right. a lot of work into that. Mm -hmm. I know, I know. Do you know? Are you like? Do you, do you? Are you friends with the artists? Or, or is it a big? Is it such a big team that you don't know who designed who? Or can you look at a champion and be like, some champions and be like, I know who. It's definitely a big team. Yeah. I know some of those guys. They are very. They are amazing. And I'm saying hi to them if they watch this video. But okay. I don't know all of them. Okay. Well, Harvest Jack, I, this one isn't really a mystery, but I just found this out. Someone in my comments actually shout out. Did you know? I mean, I'm assuming you knew, uh, but like, what's up with if this is Galek and Kale and Elhane and Aethel's skulls on his necklace? That's pretty cool. I yep. didn't realize that. Yep. So there's, I can he tell by the Galek. messenger from the future. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. All right. Uh, do you, uh, oh, 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 give me this one here. What is, uh, what's in the back of Muddy Uko's, what is this stuff? That's actually a fermented alcohol oh. <laughs> a drink <laughs> beverage i don't know so he needs to go he needs to go party with uh with good old yoshi right uh well they those creatures like that like that yes oh, okay. they're cool. supposed to like that cool uh, i think of, i think the biggest alcoholics in the game are probably molly because she has bar brawl Cheers As and rowdy woman. crowd. <laughs> well, she had her abilities: <laughs> our bar brawl, cheers, and rowdy crowd, <laughs> and roast. Uh, um, well, and then I Yoshi. stand in solidarity with Molly, and I don't. 
Yeah. So Molly, I mean, yeah. your point here. <laughs> yeah. All right. And also another, an, a buffed general is Stork. He's the guy who needs the buffs the most, by the way. And while we're here on the screen, I mean, golly, he's awful. Uh, and Jing Wan, another one, another one there. All right. We're, okay. Uh, my final one is, well, I have two, two final comments for you. Number one is Horophy's. What is in the back of Horophy's is thing? Is that also fermented alcohol or is that, what is it? That's an elixir. Uh... A, a, a rejuvenating elixir, I guess, and uh, this is inspired uh, by Indian um, burial traditions. Oh, wow, cool. Hey guys, uh, I, I, I cannot leave, uh, let Cyril leave without asking her what I promised everybody in my apology video that I would ask, and that is Tag Team Arena. I made a video, Cyril, this is my fault, you know, I made a video talking about here's how to easily speed farm, uh, you know, uh, legendary skill tones and sacred shards in the, in the, you know, in the shop, in the bazaar. Uh, of Tad Team Arena. And boy, did I get it from my viewers. It was my most disliked video of all time, uh, Cirilla. Very sad days. I'm really sorry. It's, oh, no, it was my fault. It's my fault. Uh, but apparently, it's very, 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 very difficult for most players to get to gold in Tad Team Arena. And it's also a shame that the the best resources are kind of uh locked in the in the gold tier so any plans to perhaps look at tag team arena either in terms of the rewards the bizarre or in terms of like the the difficulty or anything like that yeah first of all i'm very sorry that that happened to you and <laughs> no, i'm it was sure my that, fault. Your, was uh, my fault. that your fans uh, will forgive you because mm -hmm. uh Everyone makes mistakes, and this is what this wasn't a mistake. This was just your point of view. This was from your perspective, uh, and then you actually analyzed the whole thing and uh, came out with an explanation, which is great. And uh, thank you for that. <clears throat> so, um, what we think of, about this is that uh, certainly we have been receiving a lot of requests to review the tech team arena and implement some changes there. However, um, from what we see right now, uh, there is um, there are some uh, very good numbers in our analytical data that show us that um, the rates of purchasing uh, rewards in those uh, tech team arena tiers uh, are uh, pretty decent, uh, and we will keep an eye on that. And we have been uh, hearing uh, some requests to not confine uh, those uh, rewards to the tiers and uh, remove all the restrictions from uh, reward from the um, sections yeah however what would be the challenge of uh, moving forward progressing in this feature then especially considering the fact uh, that you yourself mentioned uh, the tactics that is being used uh, with putting out uh, one um, champion defense Defenses, yeah. on the tactic arena. Um, from what we see, uh, a lot of F2P players uh, also manage to get to the needed tiers uh, and to progress uh, within um, missions in getting to Romantu. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, of course, um, we will... Um, review the rewards in those tiers and maybe replace some items uh, also what we need to look at is the time uh, of the battles and maybe some reduction methods there however uh, that is not our priority right now i'll be honest with you here but it is on our table and uh, the last thing is that the level of difficulty right now uh, both in silver and in gold actually corresponds to uh, our expected levels uh, at this stage and i should mention that players themselves create uh, this uh, difficulty um, this difficulty level on the arena uh, which also which feels uh, especially which is especially acute uh, for end game, game players those who uh, progress in missions trying to get Romantu um, and it is okay because it's not supposed to be an easy content okay. but uh, we keep checking our analytical data and uh, recently we have expanded our tiers 
uh, there, which uh, played out um, really well for the whole thing. And uh, we'll see how um, it goes on in the future and uh, maybe uh, do something in that manner as well again. Okay, sounds good. I really appreciate you the the you know the, the openness and honesty and, and willingness to at least address those questions, even though the, if the answers aren't necessarily what we're all looking for. Uh, I think that the biggest thing on that to me is that while I, I do accept all the data and all the answers that you give, and I think that it makes sense, you know, from your point of view. I also think that like part part of the frustration really emanates from uh, those resources and how difficult they are to get anywhere else in the game. That that's that that kind of informs the frustration overall with the difficulty of of tag team. Uh, so you know, hope to see obviously advances in those areas as well, and hope that you guys do get a chance to to look at, at tag team arena. You know, because it could be a really really cool feature of the game. But from my viewers at least and I can only speak about what I hear and read, you know, uh, it's not one of their favorite areas of the game. And it might be, you know, if, if more quality of life implementations such as difficulty level and rewards were, were addressed. Yep, certainly. But with all that said, I wanted to thank you so, so much for coming on today. I know we've gone a lot longer than, than we had planned. Do you have anything else to say? Yep. May okay. I just uh, add one important thing, uh, sure. considering the importance of the day and if uh, my fellow Ukrainians watch this video, I just want to say two words. I just said, um, let's keep on fighting and um, everything is going, is going to be okay. No, no, no. I think that's, I think that's great. Honestly, I was going to ask you if you had any final thoughts too. And that, that makes, uh, you know, again, I want to thank you, especially on today of all days, for coming on here, being open about about everything, sharing some of you know your passions and meaning, and how it relates to you know the game and, and what you guys have created as well, uh, showing that unity of of Ukraine and and of course again, uh, we'll continue to do everything that we can. Again, we we don't know what you're going through. We're not in your shoes, but the community is definitely behind you, both the creators and you know our viewers and stuff like that. So thank you for everything. Really appreciate you again making the time to come on here and, and chat with me today. Thank you so very much. No problem, guys. That's going to do it for the video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you again to Cyrilla for joining us. I'll have all the raid official links and stuff for you guys in the comments below as well. Thank you. And as always, take care, guys.